Hi, uh, this is Abhijit Chordia. I did my MS in civil engineering in uh, specialization in geotechnical engineering at Georgia Institute of Technology, fondly known as Georgia Tech in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, my undergraduate background is uh, B civil from University of Mumbai. So my primary reason why I chose to do masters was um, the course I was interested in geotechnical engineering was not taught in depth in a bachelor of engineering um, degree in University of Mumbai. I had like only a couple of uh, subjects uh, while I was doing it. So I wanted to explore it more. I wanted to explore it further. I wanted to explore it practically. That's why I chose to do a uh, master's. So the first thing I started to do um, when I wanted to choose universities was I went online and um, looked for the best universities that were offering the program I was interested in. I used USA News um, rankings to see uh, what the universities can offer how I can get into them. And um, after that, I started looking for a platform which would help me connect with people or show the past experience of these people, how they can help us or help me instead. So I went, um, um, I, I browsed and then I found um, Yocket and Stupidset. And uh, I, got a terrific uh, platform where I could interact with past students or maybe current students who are there in US at, uh, or who were there in US at that time. I got to connect with a guy who I am still friends with. He is a wonderful person. He helped me um, uh, by showing how we can interact with professors beforehand and uh, ask them what the program can offer, how um, the research is going on at that point or at this point currently in that particular university or what the professor is working or the professors are looking for the student. So I did that. I He connected me with another people from the universities. That really helped a lot. So uh, the way another thing I remember was uh, past university record. Um, like uh, the students who have got admitted in, what was uh, their GRE score like, what uh, the LRI looked like, or what were they strong, or did they face any problem in uh, in applying for any particular university. Yocket really uh, gave me a very good platform to um, combine all this information. I mean, it was all combined there, and it was just one platform I needed. So it really helped me a lot. Uh, another reason that might have been um, case was um, I was uh, having really strong letter of recommendations. They were really good uh, because I know the professors personally. One of the professors uh, was PhD from uh, IIT Mumbai in geotechnical engineering. I did um, one project with him, which was related to the course I was applying in. Um, Another reason was um, my academic background was really strong. I was uh, one of the top students uh, from my college in civil engineering. So that might have been the reason. And the most important, I think, that's why I'm talking about it um, in last is a statement of purpose. You have to be so concise and so perfect. Your SOP has to be perfectly um, telling your story telling your background, telling what you want in the future. In all that, probably 1,000 or 1,500 or what the limit university has uh, set, you have to always be in that limit and tell your complete story. So it has to be so concise, but yet telling your complete story. People here take uh, words from professors very seriously, very genuinely. So if your professor is adding any ambiguous word or skeptical words in um, his LOR, then it does not look good. Your letter of recommendation, I'm sorry, has to have a very positive vibe about you. Very first days were just jet lag. And this was like first time I took an uh, international flight. So I had no idea what, I mean, I have heard about jet lags, but I never knew what it would feel like. So I guess my first two days were just getting adjusted to time and uh, uh, getting adjusted to weather. Um, it used to be 
kind of hot during the day and then it used to be uh, very breezy in the evening so it was a very mixture of weather uh, to get uh, acquainted to in atlanta and probably that was the best time fall was the best time to come to us in atlanta as you go further north it it becomes very cold but atlanta was okay uh another thing was um getting acquainted to the supermarkets here and how you would go there like do you have a public transport or would you have to take uh, private cabs like uber or lyft or something like that um and uh, how, first first was um, to identify these places where we can get uh, what we need like an indian store indian grocery store where you could find um, maybe the dal you want the rice you want uh, or or anything so that was um, first few days uh, i came to us uh, probably two weeks approximately two weeks before my course was going to start so that i could um, uh, get acquainted to the weather i could get acquainted to the city i could get acquainted to the place and then uh, once all my home and everything was set i can go ahead and uh, um, start studying without any interruption so first two weeks were getting acquainted to the uh, acquainted to the place after i got my um, i20 from georgia tech i started looking for um, apartments nearby and i had a definite budget in front of me that i do not want to spend maybe more than 500 or 600 dollars per month um on staying because i know other costs would add up too and uh, so i started looking up for apartments first or maybe uh, paying guests or something like that uh, which does not work here but then um i i got to know that i cannot live by myself with such a uh, stringent budget i have set for myself so i had to go uh, start looking for roommates so i went uh, on facebook there was a group of uh, people um, that was called uh, ms um, in us 2015 2016 it goes by year i guess so in that group you find a link to another group which is related to university that you are going to so i went in there and i found that um, uh, there are a couple of students were also looking to share the apartment so i got connected to four or five people there and then uh, we decided to rent a three bedroom apartment together and uh, after that uh, we had the budget sorted we had everything um, in place so i went ahead and um, uh, um, got an apartment which was probably like a 10 minute walking distance from uh, my building in the university or maybe 15 minute at max and uh, we decided that's a good place and affordable to live without compromising on uh, facilities so we went ahead and uh, booked that uh, i mean i got in touch with the leasing agent leasing manager of the uh, apartment community and uh, they were helpful uh, to me understanding that i am not in us right now i am in india and uh, he helped me through email he was very uh, diligent in replying them uh, replying to my emails or my questions and once everything was set uh, we sent him a check as a deposit and everything else was fine it all turned out good so i did not start looking for a job before my course was done so uh, i was in my second semester um, uh, from january to uh, april or may uh, and i started looking for an internship summer internship that would be from may till august so i started looking for it around um january 2016 and um it was um, mainly going on linkedin and looking for companies that are offering internship positions and um trying to get connected with people in that particular company or maybe go on their website and look if there are opportunities that are open uh there were career fairs in my university one of the career fair i got to meet uh uh my first hiring manager he hired me as an engineering intern uh my internship started around uh, may 2016 and uh, then it was uh, continued till august 2016 it was like probably more than 3 months and uh, once the internship came to uh, uh, came near an end 
I decided that as I was only going to have a couple of courses uh, remaining, I would do a part-time uh, co-op position with the same company. So I would say career fairs, LinkedIn, and company websites uh, combine them together and they will help you find the job you are looking for. So it seems very fascinating. Uh, the campus seems very likable. Uh, I mean, it is likable, not denying that. But uh, first two weeks or maybe first for, uh, probably first four weeks when the studies are just going okay, you get to know the city probably a little bit. You get to know your campus a lot. Uh, like where are the student organizations? Where are areas where you can... Uh, uh, rejuvenate yourself, where, where are the recreational area, where is the gymnasium, where are sports or something like that and these different areas but as um, the course advances you realize you have got uh, really less time to enjoy the life I guess at that time uh, until uh, a certain break you get. So I got to know the city well uh, probably around uh, after December a little bit because uh, the first semester is where um, you are uh, in a mix of emotions where you have to study hard and you're away from home and uh, everything else combined. Um, after that, uh, I think um, getting to know the city is uh, really when you probably start working or uh, maybe when you have breaks uh, between semesters or maybe in, in, in semester you have fall break or spring break and that is the time when you go out and explore the cities. So my advice to all the prospective students will be that um, um, while you are preparing for GRE, make sure you're learning the vocabulary a lot, like make it a daily habit first thing. Um, solve a lot of problems, write a lot of essays while you're uh, preparing for GRE and um, after that uh, once you have given GRE and TOEFL uh, and you have a decent score um, um, make sure you choose the university based on the program you want to enroll in and not the city that you want to go in US because once the program starts you probably won't even have uh, enough time to explore the city so make sure your priority is the program that you are enrolling in it okay uh, another thing is while searching for job, make sure uh, you have a decent LinkedIn profile, a very professional LinkedIn profile. You uh, go to events that uh, your college or your university would have for you, uh, career fairs, uh, marketing events or whatever else the companies come in. Uh, make sure this is where you build your professional network. You get to meet different people in, in, the, in, in your industry. And that's really going to help you a lot in, in, in future. Once you come to US, make sure uh, you're uh, spending your time on studies a lot and not um, wasting your time. I'm not saying don't have a life. Have a life, but I've seen people uh, who forgot the, why, why, what was the main purpose they came to US for. And that's not really helpful um, to you, to your family. You have an obligation to yourself that why you came to US, you should always uh, focus. You're, uh, you will always get the motivation from the fact why you wanted to be here. Just ask yourself this question and you'll be back on track. Definitely a uh, lot more jobs in computer science than civil engineering because it goes back to a process like uh, the intake for computer science students is a lot than compared to civil engineering. Um, there are a lot of more industries, more uh, opportunities coming up in computer science. Like every time you see someone pitching an idea uh, regarding um, computer science or anything related to computer or IT maybe. But uh, with civil engineering, it has got its traditional um, background that is still intact uh, and so is computers. But uh, computer science has a lot of different varieties that have come into place, whereas civil engineers do build different structures, but internally they are not um, changing a lot. Like they will enhance things, but they will not create new things or uh, something like that. So main reason for having more jobs in computer science is more intake, more number of students go for it, 
it's like a demand supply. Like you have a lot of demand and that's why you're probably getting more jobs in uh, computer science. If you ask me out of 100 civil engineers and 100 computer science, how many people make it to the job, that would remain the same. Like uh, maybe there are 1,000 opportunities for computer engineers and 900 make of them to the opportunities. But uh, if there are only 100 opportunities for civil engineers, then 90 would make for it. So the percentage would remain same, I guess, approximately same. It's just the demand and supply that's uh, the different case here.